Hello, hello everybody. Hope you're all doing really well. It's, uh, it's a pretty miserable day today. And actually I really like it because uh, often this time of year it's quite warm and, and sunny. Now the area that I'm in uh, today is called Nile Creek and uh, it's up island a little bit. Again, it's not too, too far from the main highway. It's quite a popular area to hike to or hike up. And uh, Nile Creek is, uh, is a, more or less a canyon. And this is one of the first waterfalls in the canyon. And then as you go up the hill here, there's quite a few cascades going down into deep gorges. Now I was here the other day with my partner Karen and I, I did take a few images of this waterfall here, but I didn't do any vlogging. I just wanted to come, come to the area, check it out. And as beautiful as this area is, I found the gorge, uh, especially this time of year when there's not much water running, extremely difficult to photograph. Some of the waterfalls are very hard to get to and others have a lot of deadfall and logs and, and so on. So they're not that picturesque. Now, perhaps, uh, you know, earlier in the year when there's more water or later in the year that it might be better. But when I came here with Karen the other day, this was probably the nicest section that I could find or, or that I could, you know, uh, get compositions of. Now, that's not to say that there isn't good photography here, uh, but I, I had a really hard time. So I've come back today because uh, when I came here with Karen, I mean, Karen's extremely patient. Uh, she'll sit around for, for hours. But, you know, it's, if you're not a photographer, watching someone take photographs is, is almost like watching paint dry. It's not very uh, exciting. So I decided to come back and do my vlog today. So what I have in mind here is there's a, a little cascade here in the foreground, and then there's another one in the background, but they, they get quite lost. Uh, but I, I don't mind that so much, as long as I have a lot of the surrounding foliage around it. But I'd also like to try and take some images with longer focal lengths, if I can back up far enough, so that I can kind of pull that, that rear uh, waterfall forward a little bit, kind of compress the scene. So that's the goal today. Uh, the, the foliage and the trees around the waterfall and the pool itself is absolutely gorgeous. The woods around this area uh, have been heavily logged. The trees here, I'm, I'm guessing maybe up to 100 years old, but it has been logged at some point. So again, this section is really great, but the woods themselves I don't find them that inspiring. Uh, the Devil's Club looks great right now, but, and the ferns, but the, the, the trees themselves, I'm, I'm not all that thrilled about. Anyway, I left enough blabbering on. Let me get set up and then I'll go over my composition. Last week's video seemed to be very popular when I went through the whole composition. So I'll try and do that again uh, today, right. Okay, uh, thanks to Nick Page, I have a new gadget, but of course it's more stuff to carry. But uh, I would probably use this out of my van, but today I thought I'd bring it with me, and that is an umbrella. Uh, but the nice thing about this umbrella is that it actually has a clamp on it, and uh, it's quite maneuverable. So uh, it looks like a, a pretty good design. As you can see, it's kind of large on one side and, and narrow on the other side. I don't know how well it would work with a, a really wide angle lens, but a day like today when I'm using telephoto lens probably work perfectly. Uh, if it was really windy, then I probably wouldn't use it either. But um, yeah, it looks like it might might be good. I haven't tried it yet, so might be just a lot of faff, you know. The, uh, the clamp is big enough that I could just 
voila, and you can of course uh, adjust it. So we'll see. Uh, you can adjust it this way as well. I don't know, might work really well. If you're interested, I'll leave a link down below. It will be an affiliate link, of course. Okay, now I will be using um, a polarizer today. Because there is quite a bit of uh, glare on the, uh, on the rocks and so on. It's quite dark today, so nothing special about the polarizer. I won't be using an ND polarizer. Uh, this is just a normal uh, circular polarizer. And I do have a, a step-up ring on this for this lens. And there we go, we're all set up. I just have to go in the creek now and uh, see what I can find. All right, so I'm all set up. And uh, the hard part about this waterfall is that if you get too low, then you cut off the bottom of the, the rear waterfall. But if you go too high, then you cut off the top because there's an evergreen that's kind of drooping over. And especially with the rain today, it's drooping down a little bit more than it was last time I was here. So there seems to be that, that fine line where you can just get the base of it and the top. I think what I'm gonna do is do a pano like I talked about before. And the reason why I'm doing a pano is because I really love the foliage that surrounds this pool. So the waterfall in some respects becomes secondary to the image. I mean, it is a focal point, but it becomes very small in the frame. I'll also take some where I zoom in a little bit closer too, but I think the wider view is my preference. I quite like the boulder over on the, uh, on the right side there. And then on the left side, we have this, uh, this log that's kind of going over diagonally. So, I don't know, it has a nice feel to it. The only problem that I am having is depth of field. The, uh, there's a, a maple here that has leaves kind of drooped in the foreground. So I might have to do a little bit of focus stacking if I want to include those leaves. Otherwise, I'll just stop down to around F16. All right, I'm all set up here. I've leveled off my camera and I'm ready to take my pano. My base exposure is one second at F16 at ISO 320. Now, as far as focus goes, for this shot, I've just focused right on the waterfall itself. And this time I'm using manual focus. So as you can see, looking pretty good. Now, as far as the foliage up here, that will be out of focus and we'll have to take a separate shot for that. I am using a polarizer and you can see that it's just below the, uh, the average because I don't want to overexpose the, uh, the waterfall. Uh, this time I'm using manual exposure rather than aperture priority. And the reason being is that I want the exposures to be the same right across the board as I do my pano. So there's no discrepancies in, uh, in the exposure. So I have it on a two second timer. And we'll just have a quick look at that. You can see by the histogram that everything is fine. We'll just zoom in. And the waterfall looks nice and sharp. The shutter speed is fine for that waterfall. It's quite small in the frame. Now if I zoom in on the leaves up in up at the corner here, you can see that they are out of focus. So I will take some shots for those. And actually these leaves are quite sharp too, which is great. There's absolutely no wind today, which is really great for me because at one second with the leaves moving, then it would be quite blurry. All right, so we've got our base exposure. So why don't we do our whole pano? So what I'm gonna do is just start way over here. And we'll just take our shot. And you'll notice the exposure is exactly the same as it was with the first one.
Shot number two. Shot number three. And shot number four. And there we go. I know I have a lot of astute viewers out there and you've probably noticed that this image is not the same as the one that was in the viewfinder. And the reason why it's not the same is often when I go to these areas, I'll take a number of variations. And in this case, I backed up just a little bit so that I wasn't so close to the, uh, the maple leaves that were quite close to the, to the foreground. And I actually preferred this image over the one that I showed you. So that's why it looks different. And I also took another version without the uh, the maple. I think I prefer the one with the maple. And I would imagine that in the fall, when this maple turns yellow, it would probably be a really great scene. So I will be heading back there in the fall and hopefully get a little bit of fall color as well. Okay, so I've decided to back up a little bit uh, with the intention of using uh, the 1 to 200 and, and try and compress the scene a little bit. But the problem that I'm having is that as soon as I do that, then the, uh, the, the overhanging tree that kind of goes over the pool here is just a little bit low. So there's a very tight uh kind of angle that you can get where you can get the bottom of the waterfall and the top but even then it it almost looks like there should be more room at the top of the the rear waterfall because those limbs are just too far down what i do really like though is the angle with all the foliage because i'm including more foliage so what i might do is just put on a the the 20 to, um, the 32 to 64 again and just try and get more of this scene in here because it really is lush and beautiful and of course by backing up you're not looking up so much so you're not including any distracting uh, pieces of white sky or anything like that but even with the wider angle lens I'm, i still have the same problem where the waterfall in the background is just a little bit tight but I'm going to take an image anyway because I, I think it, I mean, I just love the foliage and of course it's so calm right now. We have maples in here, uh, conifers, uh, lots of moss. I've been here for quite some time now and uh, I think I found another composition other than just shooting straight on at the waterfall. I've come to the conclusion that as beautiful as this is, you, it's hard to get away from shooting straight on at it. You can't really get to the side of it or get a different angle. You're, you're pretty limited. But what I found is by going over to the side here, now I am cutting off a little bit of the top waterfall, but I still have two tiers coming down, which is really quite nice. But uh, what I've discovered is that I can get some of these uh, maple leaves in the foreground, except at the top. And 
there's a little bit of light or ambient light kind of backlighting them so they stand out quite nicely and also there's a little shrub here with some little red berries in it uh, this shrub here actually uh, I'm not sure if they'll show up in the final image but uh, they are very pretty um, the composition is quite nice we have these sweeping uh, mossy limbs in the in the foreground or, or above the falls and then the maple leaves now I am having to again focus stack because I'm so close to these maple leaves in the foreground but I don't think it's going to be a big problem because there's no wind whatsoever so I'm just taking one shot focused on the waterfall and then another shot focused on the leaves and then I'll just combine those together in, uh, in Photoshop. It should be quite easy. All right, everybody, once again, another week, another video. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave me a thumbs up as that really helps my channel. And as always, if you enjoy the content of this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, till next time. Bye for now.